All right, guys, um, still in simple harmonic motion. We've done the mass of a spring horizontally and vertically. Done with that. Last thing we need to do um, with um, simple harmonic motion is a pendulum. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at a pendulum. And I'm just gonna tell you straight up, the AP is only concerned about you understanding or being able to know what happens with the period of a pendulum. So real briefly, I'm just gonna go over this real quick, okay? All right, so um, what is a pendulum? Well, a pendulum is nothing more than, right, uh, some uh, string, I guess we call it. That's the length. And on the bottom, we have a mass. It's actually called a bob, but don't worry about it, right? So this, right, would be the length of my string, right? Um, what do, how do I have to get this guy moving? Well, I got to grab the, the bob, and I have to pull it a little bit to the right here. So I got to displace it. What happens, I let it go, and obviously a portion of gravity, or I should say a component of gravity is gonna drag this pendulum back over here, right? And then what's happened is it's gonna, as it travels through, right, it's gonna go through, right, a cycle. It's got potential energy here, U, obviously, right? Way down here on the lowest point, that's kinetic energy, it's going the fastest. And then again, what's gonna happen to that uh, kinetic energy? It's gonna get converted to potential, right? Potential to kinetic, et cetera, et cetera. And theoretically, this should go on forever. I should just point out, we're only really gonna concern ourselves with pendulums with small angles, right? Because the math that we use is just specific, works really well for small angles, okay? So what happens here? Well, once again, we get a potential. By the way, last time it was the spring in the mass, so it was a, really a um, spring potential energy. This is gonna be gravity potential energy, which is gonna be converted to kinetic, which is gonna be converted to gravity, to kinetic, et cetera, and so on, and so on, and so on, okay? So just kind of a background right there, right? So let me just give it to you, right? What is, or how do we determine the period of a pendulum? Period of, period, or T, pendulum, P, right? Is gonna be equal to two pi radical L over G, where obviously TP is the um, period, Right, that's in seconds, obviously, right? Uh, L, that's gonna be my length. That's obviously in meters. And G, well, we all know what G is. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And that, that's gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared. Sorry, 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's just do a couple problems and then I'll give you a couple problems of homework and then uh, we'll kind of be done with this, okay? So let's take a look at an example. So my first example, Let's suppose I have a period, a pendulum with a period of four seconds. All right, well, what's the length, right? What is the length of the string? Okay, so let's take a look. How do I handle this problem? Period of a pendulum is equal to two pi radical L over G. All right, what am I given? Well, I'm given the time, right, which is gonna be four seconds. So that's gonna be two pi radical L over G. All right, how am I gonna handle this? Obviously, I'm gonna to have to take the square root at some point, but let's let's deal with this two pi over here. So I'm gonna divide by the two pi. I'm gonna divide by two pi. So let's see, what do I got here? Four divided by 6.28. So I got about 0.63 is equal to radical L over G. Looks like I'm gonna to have to take the square root, square root, so I'm gonna square root that guy, right? I get about point, let's just round it to eight. That's gonna be equal to what? L over G, let's make that 10, right? Um, cross multiplying, right? Did I do this right? Hold on a second here, guys. 0.63 square root, 0.4, my bad guys, this is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, not 0.8. I don't know what I did right there. Right, so this is 0.4. Cross multiplying, I'm gonna multiply that by 10, right? And I get, right, so the length of this guy is about four meters, right? Okay, um, so that's one way that I can take a look at a pendulum that they might straight up ask you to find the period if they give you that stuff. Let's take a look at some other stuff that they can ask here, right? So let's take a look, All right? What else could they ask? Well, I'm looking at this equation. Period is equal to two pi L over G. Well, it looks like to me they can mess around with these variables right here. Well, let's take a look at some stuff. So what happens if I change some things? 
right? Oh, by the way, let me come back here real quick. This, right, is my equilibrium position. If I pull my pendulum back, this is what we're gonna call my amplitude, right? So just to give you a little heads up, okay? So let's go back here again. What can I change here? All right, so what happens if I change the mass? What happens if I change the mass of the pendulum? Well, does it affect the period? Well, two pi LG, well, guess what? No change. Why is that? Well, it's not an equation, okay? Uh, let's ask another one. Um, how about I double, double my um, length, right? What happens then? Two P, two, sorry, T, period of pendulum, two pi radical L over G. All right, let's do this. Let's let's. See. I just want to know what happens if I mess with the me the length. So let's separate this guy here. Two pi radical one over g radical l. All right. So I'm just pulling this out here, and here's l. So what do I want to do? I want to double my length. So all I really care about is the two l. Right. So let's double my length. So radical two. So what happens if I double my length? So square root two. Well. Lo and behold, it changes by 1.4 times, let me erase that, 1.4 times bigger, okay? What else can we do? Well, I can make the length bigger. What else can I do? Well, let's half, right, uh, half the length. What happens then? Two, uh, sorry, period of the pendulum, two pi radical, L over G. Well, let's separate this again. 2 pi, 1 over G, radical L, right, length, and let's half it. So what happens if I half the length? 0.5, look at this. The period goes to 0 0.707 times smaller. So really what that means is as I, the length gets smaller, the period gets smaller, right? The frequency gets bigger, right? Uh, what's the next thing that they can ask you? All right, how about if I pull the pendulum farther away, right? From my amplitude, pull it way out here. All right, how about if I uh, change amplitude? Well, period of pendulum, two pi radical L over G. Well, I don't have a amplitude there, so guess what? No change, okay? I'm uh, gonna give you a couple problems. There's some problems in the textbook I'll give you for this, right? And then um, we'll take it from there. All right, guys, uh, be safe. Bye-bye.